Welcome back! Today on Dialed In DIY, I'm ripping into a portable fan heater. Once we have it open, I'll show you what's inside, what can go wrong with it, and if you want to salvage parts, what is good to keep. These little heaters can be great when they work, but this one was given to me to take apart because it doesn't stay hot for very long. I can figure that it's not this cutoff switch on the bottom that's designed to turn it off if it tips over, because it will actually run the fan, it just won't keep the heat going. So. We're going to pull the four screws out of the back and slowly start to open it up and take a look inside. In a previous video, I took apart a hairdryer to show you what was inside of that, and you may note that the parts inside of each of these are very similar. The only difference is this heater has them on a slightly larger scale. In the top corner, you see the picture of the cutoff switch that I'm taking off the bottom of this. This is basically a very simple switch that will turn off all the power if the fan tips over. Just like the hair dryer, this heater works by a process of forced convection, which is basically running electricity through a coil and the resistance in that coil is going to cause it to heat up and glow hot. You blow a fan across that, it forces the hot air out, and you can use it to either heat something up or dry your hair. This particular dial on the front is a manual thermostat that allows you to adjust how much heat the coils will produce. Turn it up, you get more heat. Turn it down, you'll get less heat. In this particular unit, you turn it up and the heat just cuts off. So far, I've been looking for obvious signs of things overheating or maybe failing or a loose wire and haven't found them. So that's why I'm going ahead and taking everything out so I can look at it from all angles and see if there's anything that's obvious that went wrong with this particular heater. Just like the hairdryer, the heating element inside of this is made out of nichrome wire. These are actually great for a lot of different projects, and I'll mention three of them that I like to make out of nichrome wire when we get towards the end of the video. Well, this is the part of the video where the obligatory warning does come into place because I'm going to plug this back in and start to look for the problem by running through the different operations. Obviously, there's several hazards going on here. One, I have an open fan blade made out of metal that could really hurt you if you stick your fingers into it. Also, we've got heating elements heating up with nothing to prevent you from sticking fingers or something else into them. So you need to be extremely cautious if you try something like this. The great news from a salvage perspective is I was able to figure out that all of the main parts work exactly like they're supposed to, but the reason the heat shuts off is actually because of a thermal switch, which is a bimetal safety switch, which turns off the power when it thinks the heater is getting way too hot. The problem with this switch is as soon as the heat starts to turn up at all, it shuts off the heater. The fan can keep working because that's what helps to cool things back down, but it won't let the heat run, so it's pretty much useless as a heater. The fan motor is really easy to separate from the heating assembly with just two screws on the back side. However, if you want to completely separate it, you do have to cut the wires that run the power to the fan, and I have some more experiments I want to do, so for now, I'm just going to reconnect it and keep playing. If you have any ideas about running a heater like this outside of its case, I suggest that you secure it like I'm about to do, but what I don't recommend is you bypassing some of the safety components which I'm about to do in order to run all of my tests. I also think it's important to clarify, I'm only going to run this for a short time outside of the case and I would never walk away from it. In fact, I'm not bypassing the tip over switch because that is one way I can control immediately turning off all power. On the exact opposite side of the thermal switch is a thermal fuse and my first set of tests actually caused that to fail and once that fails, it can only work once. So there will be no power running and that means I have to bypass that as well in order to get the coils to heat back up. To operate this as a heater, I would never bypass any of the safety features, but for the purpose of this test, I actually had to bypass the thermal fuse and the thermal switch in order to get any power to run through it. As you can see, as soon as I start turning up the heat, you get a fast rise in the temperature of the coils, which means everything else is working exactly like it's supposed to. The 
fact that everything works well is great news for me because that means there's parts I can salvage for other projects. And I mentioned earlier in the video that I love the Nichrome wire for some specific projects. By cutting free some smaller sections of coils, I can make smaller heating units. Also, I can take out a longer piece, stretch it out, and attach it to a handle and use it for a wire-based foam cutter. You can also use small section of the wire as a filament to make a small homemade lamp. So because of the two small broken parts, I am turning this from a repair project into a salvage project. But just taking a look at these coils tells you there's some serious fun you can have making other projects with these parts. Thanks for taking the time to stop by Dialed In DIY today and watching me take apart this messed up heater. If you enjoyed it or got something useful out of it, please let me know by clicking that thumbs up below. Also, I'd love to hear your comments, especially if you have some ideas for projects that can be used from the parts that I salvaged. Also, feel free to check out my playlist to see if there's some other Dialed In DIY videos that you might like to watch. And as long as you're here, I'd love it if you'd subscribe and then come on back. There'll be plenty more Dialed In DIY to come.